Welcome to the Chem Doctor. This is the uh, first video in the series on ionization energy and it will fall under the category of periodic trends. Now I highly recommend that before you deal uh, with this particular presentation that you first watch the presentations on attractive forces and on atomic size because that way you'll understand this presentation uh, a lot better rather than diving in right here. So start with the attractive forces of which there are two videos under the uh, link periodic trends move to atomic size and then come to ionization energy of which there will be two videos. This is a periodic trend so we have a trend going from left to right across any period and we'll have a trend going top down for any family or group of elements. All right, now, by definition, ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. What you need to remember about this is that all atoms have protons in their nucleus. So we can sort of draw a picture of that this way. So this little circle with a positive in it represents a proton. And the proton has an attractive force for an electron. This is the reason for the way we assign the charges to these. So the positive and the negative actually are arbitrary. It just simply means that these two particles have a mutual attraction for one another that happens to be the same in magnitude. So they operate in a lot of ways like little magnets and everyone probably who's viewing this video at some time in their life has played with a magnet and you know that when it's attached to something that it requires a certain amount of force or energy input in order to break the attraction that the magnet has for whatever it's attached to. Like for example, if your mother has magnets attached to the refrigerator door, in order to remove the magnet you actually have to grab a hold of it and then generate a certain amount of force to pull the magnet off the refrigerator. So the amount of energy required to separate an electron from a proton is what we call ionization energy. And over here on the right side of the screen, like in the other videos that I've produced for periodic trends, I'm showing protons here at the bottom. I only have one positive charge here, but you can imagine this applies to any kind of atom. So if it was lithium, there would be three positive charges in here. If, if this was nitrogen, there would be seven of them. And then uh, I also include information here about the energy levels, where energy level 1 is the energy level closest to the protons, energy level 2 is the next one out, which is a further distance away, and then energy level 3. I haven't included the other energy levels because we don't really need them here for this presentation, but just understand that, that for the periodic table there's going to be upwards of, of seven different energy levels. So as we go from energy level 1 to energy level 3, the distance those electrons are away from the protons is increasing. Similarly, as we move from energy level 1 to energy level 3, the electrons in energy level 3, for example, have a higher potential energy than the electrons in energy level 1. If you think about this for a minute, it should make perfect sense because the electrons that are in energy level 1 are a lot closer to the protons. So, so they, they are going to be under a, a in a way of thinking a, a much greater force of attraction between these electrons in energy level one and the protons here than the electrons that are in energy level three. The, the relationship between potential energy and ionization energy is equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. What do I mean by that? Well, electrons that are in energy level one are going to be much harder to remove and will require a lot more energy because they have significantly lower potential energy by comparison to the electrons that are in energy level 3, which are much further away from the protons than the electrons in energy level 1. They're at a higher potential energy and therefore easier to remove, less ionization energy to remove an electron from energy level 3 than energy level 1. All right, so now let's see how we can apply this thinking to the periodic trends and what we're going to do to talk about ionization energy relative to a periodic trend going left to right across any period is we're going to look at period two elements so this number right here is a reference to period number and it happens to be period number two the significance of this is that as we go from lithium 
to neon, we are filling energy level two. So I'm actually going to write that in here. We're filling energy level two as we go left to right from lithium to neon. Now, to understand how ionization energy works, moving across any period in the periodic table from left to right, we have to consider Coulomb's law. And I know I'm risking putting the viewer to sleep, but let's just boil this down into something that's relatively easy. So my squiggle here means in proportion. So, and this F is force of attraction force of attraction between the protons and the electrons and this is going to be in proportion to the charge available to attract the electron to the protons div divided by the distance squared all right so there's two there's basically two factors that we have to investigate moving left to right across here in order to understand why ionization energy actually increases left to right. So there it is. I've, I've actually given you the punchline. So let's go ahead and write it down. And I'm going to abbreviate it here. So ionization energy, it increases left to right across any period on the periodic table. All right now, let's see why that is the case. The first thing we're going to do is deal with the charge, and we've done this before, both for attractive forces and for um, the atomic size issue. And to, to tackle the charge issue, we have to deal with a concept which is called effective nuclear charge. And Z effective, or effective nuclear charge, now remember, this is the charge available to attract surface electrons to protons. Now think about this for a minute. If you're going to ionize, which means to form an ion, if you're going to ionize an element or an atom by removing an electron, which electron are you going to take? Well, you're going to take the electrons that are furthest away from the protons first. All right? and so you're going to be dealing with removing a surface electron. So effective nuclear charge is going to really matter here because this is the charge available to generate the force that's holding those surface electrons on the surface of the atom in the first place. Remember that Z effective is equal to the number of protons because the number of protons is literally the number of positive charges minus what we call the core electrons. And these are the electrons that sit between the protons that are in the nucleus of the atom and the surface of elect and surface electrons. Now, for lithium to calculate the Z effective, and I've done this before, we'll go through it again. First, the thing you want to do is generate the electron configuration. So the electron configuration for lithium is going to be 1s2. Let me clean this up a little bit. 1s2, uh, 2s1. And I'll go ahead and, and underline the core. So here's my core. Well, actually, I'll circle it. So here's the core. These electrons are sitting between the protons and the surface electron, which is here. That's the electron that we're talking about removing when we talk about ionization energy. So that's our surface electron. So my Z effective for the surface electron here is going to be 3 minus the core, which is 2, plus 1. All right, and I'll go ahead and write that down here. Now, let's go ahead and do this very quickly for beryllium, because what I want you to do is I want you to be able to see what's happening with the charge that's available to attract surface electrons as we go left to right across the periodic table. So for beryllium, it's... Uh, atomic number is um, 4. So its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2. All right, again, the core electrons here are going to be the 1s2 electrons. My surface electron is here, or electrons, um, excuse me, are here. All right, so the Z effective for this is going to equal, um, whoops, excuse me, it's going to equal 4. 
minus 2 or plus 2. So in the interest of time, my Z effective for beryllium is plus 2. For boron, it will be plus 3. For carbon, plus 4. Then nitrogen, plus 5. Oxygen, plus 6. Fluorine, plus 7. And neon, plus 8. So we see, as we go left to right across the table, that, that the effective nuclear charge is increasing. All right, and this argument has been made like I said at the beginning of this video, both to describe attractive forces and their trend on the periodic table and then the size. So I know that we're going a little bit fast here and that's why I say that you need to review um, those videos before you watch this one. Now let's deal with the distance issue here. All right, We've dealt with the charge, what's going on with the charge as we go left to right, but what's going on with the distance? All right, so going back to lithium, Note that lithium has a total of three electrons uh, in its electron structure. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to come over here now to the right side of my screen. I'm going to go ahead and put those electrons in for, lith uh, for lithium. So two of those electrons are here in energy level one. And then the third electron is up here in energy level two. This is the surface electron, so I'm going to mark it with an asterisk. Now we move to beryllium, and beryllium has also got two electrons in energy level one, and then it also has two electrons as surface electrons. So I'm going to put beryllium's electron now in here into the, the electron structure using a different color, and I'll mark it with an asterisk. So look what's happened here. As we shift from lithium to beryllium, all right, our nuclear charge has increased, which I've written in here at the top, and then we've added an additional electron, right? We've gone from one surface electron to two surface electrons, and you see that that second electron is being added to exactly the same energy level. The significance of that is that the distance that this uh, additional electron is from the protons is no different than the distance of lithium surface electron from the protons. So D is not changing is not changing as we go left to right now let's shift to boron all right and boron's got a total of five electrons this configurations 1s2 2s2 um, whoops 2p1 2p1 now again it's going to have the same core structure as both lithium and beryllium. But the only difference is, is that now we're going to have an additional electron that's going to be in the P-series. And you say to yourself, well, there, there is a slight distance change here because the, the 2P system of suborbitals is at a slightly higher energy than the 2S. And so it's true, this particular electron is a little bit further away from the protons by comparison to these two electrons in the 2S. But this distance difference is very, very small. By comparison to if you look at what happens when we shift literally from an electron that is in energy level 1, for example, to an electron that is in energy level 2, there is a substantial difference in, in distance. Similarly, going from uh, energy level 1 to energy level 3, for example, huge, huge um, change in distance. So this is a very small change in distance. Then when we look at carbon, you can see what's going to happen from carbon all the way to, to, uh, to neon. Its uh, carbon structure is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So now we're going to have an additional electron, which is going to go, uh, it's actually going to be in its own suborbital right here. And you can see that the distance difference between this electron and the one that we have for boron is no different. So the bottom line is, is that, and I'm going to put this in red also, as we move left to right across the periodic table for any given period, the distance factor is essentially constant. Given that we do have some minor fluctuations, but essentially this value is constant. So now if you just think about your mathematics a little bit, and we think about the force of attraction here, as we go left to right across the periodic table, the, the nuclear charge is increasing disproportionately as we move left to right. 
yet the distance factor regarding the electrons that we're adding into the energy level is remaining constant as we go left to right. So the force of attraction is going to increase. So force of attraction goes way up. All right. Similarly, because the force of attraction is going up, your ionization energy also has to go up. All right. If you think about this, it should make perfect sense. If the if the electrons, if the surface electrons are being held harder and harder as you move left to right across the table, it's going to require significantly more energy to remove a surface electron from something that's on the right side of the table by comparison to something that is on the left side of the table. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close the video.